and fifth Psalm. Psalm 105. <clears throat> And even after we read our text here today, I want you to keep your Bible open and uh, because we're going to be looking at really the entire chapter and that's where I said that I could have made this uh, uh, so much longer than I have, <clears throat> but we will touch upon it. But anyway, our main emphasis is going to be Psalm 105, 1 through 5. That's going to be our focus here today. Everybody have it, Psalm 105, beginning at verse 1, reading down 2 and through verse 5. In the heading, the Bible does not give us who the psalmist is but it's a uh, wonderful psalm and certainly applicable or applicable however you want to say it and notice what he says right out of the shoot here in verse 1 oh give thanks unto the Lord can somebody say amen amen Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk you of all his wondrous works. Glory you in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face uh, evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Amen. You may be seated. Well, he kind of sets the stage there when he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And so I, I want to preach this morning on simply what I refer to the right response. The right response. You know, when, when something is done or something is said uh, and uh, we respond, sometimes that response can be uh, wonderful and good and some other times maybe it's a response that's totally out of line. And so we're talking about the right response here. As we approach this another Thanksgiving season, a season in which every one of us, especially as God's children, as God's people, I believe that, that we need to reflect upon and then we need to respond to all the many wonderful blessings and benefits and all of the goodness that God has poured out upon our lives, not just on a regular basis, but on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, even as we are under his care on a moment by moment basis, uh, I believe that we need to respond in a fashion that will give give him glory and give him praise and magnify him for all that he has done. Thanksgiving. That's what Thanksgiving season is all about. Kind of remembering all that God has done. But we understand that a thankful heart is not just one day out of the week or one week out of the year. It, it is a daily continual thing. And so the right response, that's really what we have going on here in this, in this text. And here the psalmist, he gives us, it's kind of um, an abbreviated yet detailed account of Israel's uh, history, uh, of, of Israel's story 
studied history and uh, as you read through the entirety of Psalm 105 that you can begin to see it there and you can begin to understand it. But, but no matter what he says that you're going to see that at every turn uh, you see God directing. At every trial you see God delivering. At every threat that comes their way you see God uh, you know just uh, defending Israel and then destroying all of their enemies. In other words when, when, when you go through the history and the, and the psalmist is going to do that uh, you're going to see that the response and everything that he says is that Israel you need to be giving praise and glory unto God because this would have never ever happened without him. These are things that are unheard of in the natural scheme of human events. Uh, humans cannot make these things happen but it is only by the power of your God. And so the right response in receiving all of this is you need to praise him. You need to be thankful. You need to have so great gratitude and appreciation for all that he has done. Now notice it starts out in verse 8 and, and this is not our outline but uh, here it is anyway and I want to go through this for a reason but in, the, in this abbreviated count of Israel's history he starts out with the establishment of Israel and that's in verse 8. He begins with Abraham which we know that with the nation that's where it began. God called him out of the land of Ur and said if you'll follow me I've got great things and places and uh, so many blessings for you and so Abraham did and then his son Isaac and then Jacob and he mentions it and so he talks about this covenant that God had made and he says you were but just a few people and they were they were just a, a, a family a large family we would think about but you were just basically a family starting out you had nothing you had nothing to call your own you were strangers in many foreign lands but God yes. Yes. Amen. Amen but God and so if I can say it again at every turn you see God's direction at every trial you see God's deliverance in every threat you see God defending and God destroying I mean things that, that that's just so unheard of so he talks about the establishment of Israel then he talks about the exile of Israel how they were exiled down into Egypt and of course that story and, and the psalmist even picks it up in verse 17 where he talks about Joseph here is a young man that his brothers who were jealous put him in a pit sold him into slavery and he went from the pit to the prison down in Egypt because of Potiphar and Potiphar's wife but yet God was not finished with him and he brought him out of the pit brought him out of the prison and put him in the palace hallelujah who but God yes. and so the psalmist once again is saying oh the wonderful works of the Lord everybody you need to praise him you need to be grateful you need to give him thanks well then he talks about not only the establishment the exile but, but their exodus then out of Egypt and he starts there in verse 27 he talks about the people that led them out of their exodus Moses and, and Aaron
water and he talks about not only the people but the plagues, the ten plagues that God sent miraculously to uh, convince the Pharaoh to allow them to come forth. And then as you uh, shift, uh, you go to verse... 37 and there he talks about their prosperity now you talk about things that's unheard of here you are slaves in a nation and they are brutalizing you and they are working you to an inch within your death to build up their kingdom but when God brings you out he strikes fear in their heart and they give you silver and gold and you leave out of there like a bandit. I mean uh, you know all kind of prosperity that who ever heard tell of such a thing uh, as this but here it is once again but God yeah. but God and then the prosperity and he talks about uh, their preservation. Did you notice at the end of that uh, verse that there was not one feeble among them but God yes. hallelujah and uh, then uh, you know you can go on uh, their provision how that God gave them the, the, the cloud by day to protect them from the burning sun he gave them uh, the fire by night to lead them and to warm them and uh, when they were hungry the manna from heaven and the quail that came down uh, like a perfect pitch with a ball bat where you could grab them, hit them and get them uh, and then the water that came out of the rock and then uh, he comes to the end of the chapter and when he said everything and basically as we've accentuated but God, but God nobody could do any of these great things but God and then notice how he closes with those four words praise ye the Lord somebody say amen, amen. Praise God. Now that's the right response. See, he's trying to say, look church, or look Israel, look nation, look at all that God has done for us. That is the right response. Now, you can do it either one of two ways. You can either mention all of the blessings, and then at the end, you would say, okay, here's the proper response. But the psalmist, he, he does it different here. He starts out with a response that needs to happen and he says here's why and then he gives this storied history of Israel so verses 1 through 5 is where he gives us what the right response is and so during this Thanksgiving season I want you to think about this right response you know what uh, no we were not back there when the Lord led us out of Egypt and uh, through the wilderness provided for us but you know what God has done wonderful and miraculous works in every one of our lives here today every one of us can look at incidences situations in our lives and say it should have never turned out that way it should have never happened that way but God but God so during this Thanksgiving season, but God, what is going to be my right response? I'm not going to linger long here, but listen. Uh, and, and whoever this psalmist is, he's my kind of guy because he just breaks it down in points. It's easy to see. It's easy to understand. So the, the first right response is I call it this, speak truthfully. Yes. Now that's found in verse 1. Psalm 105 in verse 1. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. He says three things here. But each and every one of them is speaking. Is speaking something that we need to verbalize. Something that, that 
that hopefully is in our heart and we need to express. So when I say speak truthfully, obviously that uh, I'm, I'm not saying necessarily here truthfully. I'm not meaning uh, that which is factual, which that ought to be evident. If we're a child of God, we only speak that which is factual. But truthfully, I'm saying speak it from the heart. Amen. That it's true. Yes. That whatever you say, whatever you speak, make sure that it's coming from the heart. It's real. It's genuine. It's not just words and that's all that it's worth is, is words and words spoken out into the air and, and they're gone. But make sure that, that it comes from the heart. And notice the first thing that he talks about that the right response in speaking truthfully. Uh, you need to praise the Lord. You need to give thanks yes. unto the Lord. And so if it's Thanksgiving season, the right response is I, I always like to do it. Get away from the hubbub. Get away if we do have family or whatever. Get away for a little while or get up early before everybody else does and just let the Lord know how much I appreciate all that He has done and all that God has given us. Uh, so speak, speak truthfully your thanksgiving unto Him and that He knows. But then the next thing He talks about, not only just focusing upon what He's done, but what about the needs that you have in the present? Speak truthfully. Call out upon His name is what He says. Now, the writers in the Word of God, they, they use that phraseology quite often, call upon His name. They don't just say call on the Lord, but call on His name. And the reason being is, is there's so many names of God. There are so many names that are attributed to Him of who He is, of, of His character, of His covenants that He's made with each and every one of us. It's not just who He is. As we said in worship, uh, there is none likened to Him. But the thing of is, is that this great God, He wants to be all of that and more to each and every one of us. So when you have a need, he says call out upon his name. So if you need a healing, he is our Jehovah Rapha. If you need leading and you don't know where to go, he's our shepherd. He's my Jehovah Nissi. Praise God. If you have material needs, Jehovah Jireh. If you need sanctification or righteousness, he's our Jehovah Makedesh and Jehovah Sid Canoe. If you need a peace in your heart, he's Jehovah Shalom. Uh, if, if you need to know he's out there in the future and he's already taking care of everything in your life, he's our Jehovah Shama. And I could go on and on and on, but he said, Hey, what's the right response? Not only thank him for what he's already done, but let him know you're going to trust him forever and that whatever needs you have, you're going to continue to call out upon him and believe him to meet the needs. Praise God, the right response. But not only just praise him for the past and call upon him for the present, but notice the proclamation. Make known his his deeds Amen. among all the people. Man, we ought to be so full of God. We ought to be so grateful for all that he's done that it just pours out of our lives. I mean, you can't stop it, you know, like trying to plug a bunch of holes. Uh, you, you, you can't stop it if you try. It just emanates out of our lives. It just pours out thanksgiving praise unto the Lord. You meet somebody on the street, uh, strike up a conversation. Let me tell you what the Lord has done. 
son. Let me tell you how great God is. Uh, proclaim uh, and make known his deeds. Let me tell you, the world out there, they don't know all that God can do. They don't know all that God is. They don't know uh, this uh, good relationship uh, that we can have. So, so praise him. Pray. Call upon him. Proclaim his wonderful deeds. So speak truthfully. But then the second response during this Thanksgiving season is not only speak truthfully in verse 1, but in verse 2, notice what he said. What did he say? Don't just speak, but sing. 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 See it there, verse 2? Sing unto the Lord. Yes, amen. Yes. Why? Because of all that he's done. Yes. Israel, look at what he took you from nothing and look where he took you to. Look how he led you and provided all of the way through. Look at us. Look at where he, he has taken us from. And look at where he's taking us to. And look at what he's done all along the way that he's doing that. So the psalmist says, what is the right song? Or what is the right response? Sing! Yes. Praise God! Sing Praise God. unto the Lord. Now, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of time here, but it did. Uh, you know, one of the things in the Word of God that really interests me and years ago I really did somewhat of an in-depth study about, about music within the Word of God. But there's, there's something that I soon found out and it's right here in this verse. There's basically two kind of songs that we sing. There's some songs that we sing to God. Yeah. Then there's other songs we sing about God. Yes. Right. Did you hear me? Yes. Songs we sing to God. Songs we sing about God. Did you notice what he said? Sing unto him. That's songs you sing to the Lord. And then he says, let the or and talk you of all his wondrous works. There's where you sing about him. And so church the right response of thanksgiving. I love to sing. I love to worship. I love to get into the presence of God and let the tears flow with hands lifted and head reared back and just bellowing out, singing unto the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I praise you Lord I worship you Lord that is the right response but then there's other times that that yeah we're always singing to the Lord and for his glory but, but when we sing to him it's just a you and God it's you're not thinking about anybody else it's you and God and it's like a love letter that you're singing unto the Lord. It's just for Him. The words other people may hear it but it's words that's just for Him. It's songs that are sung uh, to the Lord. But ah, oh, thank God for those songs that we sing about Him. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You see, that's a song about God. Yeah, it's a song to God, but it's a song about His wonderful works. And so, uh, when, when we sing in, in the services, they're all unto the Lord, but recognize the difference of singing to the Lord. Lord, I'm singing these words is 
a song to you. But this is a song of words that is about you. And the psalmist says, do both. That's the right response. You need to sing triumphantly. Not only speak truthfully, but sing triumphantly, victoriously. A smile on your face. Hallelujah. What a God. If there's anybody that has something to sing about, it's the people of God. Don't let the world steal our song and our victory and our joy. Notice what he says in verse 3, the latter part of it, and verse 4. So not only speak, not only sing, but what's that first word in verse 4? Seek. Seek. <laughs> what's the right response? I'm going to sing or I'm going to speak truthfully. I'm going to sing triumphantly, but I'm going to seek him tenaciously. Nothing is going to stop me from my desire for the Lord. I will draw nigh unto God. He said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. I will be hungry. I will be thirsty. And so the word seek here, that's, that's what it means to seek hard after. Hard on the trail after. And it's not that God can is not uh, easy to catch up with. But what it means is that you cannot allow the divergences and the distractions that the devil tries to throw in front of you to discourage you or to cause you to quit. I will seek the Lord regardless of how hard the road is, regardless of all that is going on in this world. I will seek the Lord. Why? Because he's been so good yes. to me. How could I have any other response? How could I do anything less than to follow hard after him because of what he has done and how he's blessed? But notice in that verse, do you see the distinguishing two factors that he talks about, things that we need to seek hard after and not become distracted or discouraged from. Seek the Lord, okay? More specifically, seek His strength. More specifically, seek His face. Amen. Seek his strength, seek his power, seek his face, seek his presence. Now that that should be pretty rudimentary. That should be pretty elementary. That should be self-explanatory. But I think the reason the psalmist said it is because he saw the problem that we see in churches today and in people today. There's some people that the only time they seek God is they seek Him for His power when they're in trouble. They need a healing. Boy, you ought to see Him pray. You ought to see Him get in church and around the altar. They have a financial or material situation. Boy, they get in there and they're seeking God. They're seeking His power. I, I, I need help. But then when the, when the threat is passed and the need has been met, they go back to their old way of life and they forget all about God. Oh, yes. 
So they treat God as a glorified Santa Claus. That they, they only go to Him when they want something. When they need something. But you see, we all know as children or in other illustrations that you can give, we're, we're grateful when children, younger children, crawl up on our lap and say, Dad, Mom, you know, I'd like to have this. And they ask for something. We're glad that they will come to us. But then there's other times we're glad that when they just crawl upon our lap and they lean into our bosom and they put their arms around us, they are not looking for anything except us. Yeah. All they want is to be close and snuggle with us. You see, God is more than glad to provide for our needs when we seek Him and we seek His power and we seek His strength. But can you imagine a relationship, a natural relationship, that the only time somebody came around and, and sought you out is when they needed needed something from you? Right. Right. Wouldn't you get a little bit weary of that? You see the phone number come up and you say, ah, they need something. That's the only reason they're calling. They need something. But any other time, no go. And so that's what he's talking about. Seek his strength when you need him, but seek his presence forevermore. Do you notice that? Not just when you need him, but all the time seek out to just crawl upon his lap, snuggle into his bosom and say, Father, I love you. I praise you for all that you are, all that you've done. That's the right response. The psalmist has one more. Speak truthfully, verse 1. Sing triumphantly, verse 2. Seek tenaciously, verse latter part of verse 3 and, and verse 4. But then notice verse 5. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. When he says, remember, I call this here, study thoughtfully. Or study thoroughly. Study upon. Think upon. Meditate upon. Remember upon. And so this Thanksgiving season, we need to remember. But it's more than just thinking, oh yeah, you know, the Lord met that need. The Lord healed my body back then. The Lord allowed this to happen good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, study upon it. That's what, remember, that's what he's talking about. Study upon it. Think about it. Get into the details and meditate upon it again. And then what's going to be the response? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But God, but God, where would I be but God? What would I do but God? Lord, you're the one. So study, and, and here's where, uh, another where he just lines it out. He makes it so easy for us to understand what he's wanting us to study or to remember. First of all, he said, remember his works, his marvelous works. And the way it's written here, he's talking about miraculous works. He's talking about remember the works that God did that only he can do. They're miracles. Uh, you can't do them. Nobody else can do them. No other individual can do them. So remember the miraculous works of God. And then he goes on, he said, don't just remember his works, but remember his wonders. See it there? In verse 5, remember his wonders. Remember his marvelous works. Uh, that he hath done. Remember his wonders. 
And wonders here, it speaks of certainly it can be miraculous, but, but what he's talking about when people wonder and we say, that's wonderful, that's unbelievable. It's something that we see. It's something that we've experienced. It's something that we know, not because we read it or somebody told us about it, but we saw it with our own eyes. We heard it with our own ears. We felt it with our own own hands. We experienced it in our own hearts. And he said these wonders of God that, that, that are seen and known and experienced that only God himself is able to perform and only God can do. And the writer is saying what are you going to do? How are you going to respond? Stop Study, remember, remember, do not forget the goodness of the Lord. But he said, don't just remember his works. Don't just remember his wor uh, wonders. And the judgments, last phrase out of his mouth, remember his words. Remember, study upon, meditate upon, think upon, remember, remember. He uses the word judgment here, and a judgment, of course, conjures up a courtroom setting, and where a judge can bring forth a judgment of guilty or not guilty. He can bring forth a judgment that can either be for the individual, can be good, or it can be bad. So a judgment can be good or bad. And so a judgment can be a promise or it can be a punishment. And we need to remember both. We live in a day when people want to focus upon the promises of the Lord, but they don't want to remember the punishment yes. of the Lord. And here he says, remember his judgments of his mouth, whether it be a promise that you can hang on to, to see you through, or whether it be a punishment of what he wants you to do, and this is how he wants you to live, and this is how he wants you to, yeah, respond. So the psalmist says, Israel, look at all that God has done for you, but God. So now what needs, how, how should you respond to all of that? Speak truthfully. Yes. Praise Him. Yes. Give Him thanks. Call upon His name. Oh. Tell the world around you of His wonderful works. Sing triumphantly unto the Lord. Sing those songs just to Him, but sing those songs about Him. Seek Him tenaciously. Don't just seek His power, but seek His presence where you just want to be with Him. Study Him thoughtfully. Study His works. Study His wonders. And study His words. Father, I was going to go on, but Lord, I just feel in my heart that all that I need to say has been said. How good you have been to us. Not only this storied history of Israel, but every one of us here today has a story to tell. That had it not been for God, but God, we would not be here today. We would not be what we are. We would not have what we possess. We would not be striving and seeking what we are striving for. It's, it's God. It's God. And 
So Lord, as the psalmist was trying to inspire the right response in the children of Israel, so Lord, I believe that he's trying to inspire the right response in my heart and in the life of everyone that's under the sound of my voice here this morning. Lord, in lieu of all that you've done, in remembrance and thought of all that you are, what is going to be my response? Am I going to simply sit on my hands and go about my way and go about my life? Just always my hand out ready to receive. Or Lord, am I going to speak truthfully? Am I going to sing triumphantly? Or am I going to seek you tenaciously? Or am I going to steady upon you and your works and your wonders and your words thoughtfully and thoroughly? God, I pray that in this Thanksgiving season that we will have the right response. And Lord, here on this Sunday morning, I pray that we'll take just a little bit of time and we'll do that. And Lord, that we're going to express how grateful we are, how thankful we are, how appreciative we are from the minutest of the small things that the world may consider small to the greatest act of God in our lives. We're going to praise you, Lord. That's the right response. So help us, Lord, here today. We want you to receive the glory and we ask it in the name of Jesus.